Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Erica and this is episode 5 of the Stitch Your Own Adventure podcast. Um, it is Labor Day weekend here in the US, so I've got a long weekend. I've got Monday off of work, so I am just enjoying it, relaxing, having some, you know, fun social plans, things like that. And I hope you guys, those of you who get a three-day weekend this week, I hope you're enjoying it. And those of you who don't, I hope that whatever weekend you have, you're making the most of it. So, this podcast is about knitting, crocheting, general crafting <laughs> that I get up to. Um, so let's dive into that. So today I am wearing my um, Metsa cardigan. It's a crocheted cardigan. I made it a while ago, I think. I don't know. I think within the last year. Um, it's by the Make and Do crew, and it's made out of um, the recommended yarn, and what I made it out of is the Lion Brand Kobu. So it's like a, I think it's a cotton bamboo mix. Co cotton boo bamboo. <laughs> um, but it's a nice long cardigan. It's open. I'll try to stand up and show you guys a little bit. So it's got these big dramatic sleeves. It's got these nice pockets. Yeah, it's, um, I looked at, it's a paid for pattern. Um, you can get a kit on Lion Brand's website where like you just buy the yarn and then you get the pattern along with it without an additional cost, um, which is how I got it. And yeah, it's, it's really nice. I haven't like blocked it. So the edges kind of curl. That's sort of my only complaint. Um, but it's, it's really comfy, really cozy. It feels like a good sweater to wear, like lounging around the house. Although you could definitely dress it up. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think what else to say. Oh, it's a really cool construction. And I looked on Ravelry just to make sure I'm not saying anything that like is paid for information right in the pattern but it's um it said so right on the description on Ravelry so I feel comfortable saying it's made the construction is so cool because you start by making two hexagons and they like magically become the body and sleeves of the sweater so it's really satisfying to see it all come together and yeah I would I would recommend the pattern for sure um anyway let's get into more more up-to-date <laughs> crafting the things I'm working on currently my works in progress so um, I should start out by saying that I got totally obsessed with a new project and did not get very much done on the next two <laughs> projects that I'm going to show you so these are um, continuing from last week you've already seen them anyway these are my socks that I am making for my boyfriend. Um, they're made out of Patton's Croy in the gray brown marl colorway. They've just got a nice two by two rib. Um, they, I did 70, 70 rounds for the, the leg. Now I'm working on the absurdly long foot. He's got long feet, long skinny feet. So this is the second sock. I already have the first one done. So I think I need, gosh, I need like 30 more rounds of the leg before I even start the toe. Um, I'm really hoping to finish these this week because I'm going on a trip <laughs> next week and I don't really want to bring like a mostly done pair of socks on a trip with me and I also don't just want them like sitting here waiting for me to be back. So hopefully I'll finish them this week. But we'll see. I think last time, last time I talked to you guys, I was, I think right around here, like right, or maybe not even. I know I'd started, I'm pretty sure I'd at least started the heel flap, but maybe I hadn't finished it. Well, I've made, I've made decent progress, you know, nothing to sneeze at. Just nothing very impressive either. So yeah, that is that project, just a simple vanilla sock in a man's size. Um, so then next, oof, reaching over. I've got, oh, and this is a really nice bag from Bags by Awesome Granny. It's got cute little otters. And I think my favorite one 
is there's one that has its little tongue sticking out and it's so cute gosh i want to try to find one now hold it up oh this one look at his little red tongue <laughs> it cracks me up anyway so let's see this is my touchstone and this one again did not get very much work done because sometimes I start a new project and I just get like totally engrossed, totally obsessed, can't put it down, don't want to pick anything else up. And so this was sort of a casualty of that. Um, but yeah, I made a bit of progress, but I really haven't touched this since Monday. And I recorded last Sunday. So, you know, it's how it goes. Oh, and I was smart. Look at me. I put a little, I put a little marker in to sort of see how, how much I'd done. Oh, you can't see it. The little marker is here. This little, little green marker. So I've done, I've done from there, so that's not terrible. It's definitely getting bigger. Let me see if I can stretch it out. Yeah. So this is like the wide end. It's one of those where it just keeps um, increasing on just one side and the other side is staying pretty straight. And then I think the shawl shape, like this is gonna be the long edge. Ah, see that? This is how I should hold it up. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's a really nice basic shawl pattern. It's got these garter sections, inching my hand down, these garter sections, and then it's got some um, sort of eyelet lacy sections. And this yarn, is my weird yarn I talked about last time. It's the Lion brand um, shawl in a ball and it's like cotton acrylic and other mystery fiber. It's really bumpy kind of, it's got some inconsistencies which I don't love, but overall I think it'll be like nice to wear. I think it'll have a kind of cozy effect with the like little halo it gets. Um, one thing I am a little disappointed about with the yarn is it was doing this like you know, it's got this really nice sort of ombre effect from here. It's got this cream and it goes into this light gray and it's getting darker, darker, darker. And then boom, black. Like no fade into that. I think it even like, it was a knot between the two colors. So that was disappointing. It would have been nice if it had continued on that nice fade, but I think in the end it'll still look nice and I think it will look more intentional once there's more of that black there. Um, so yeah coming along nicely. I'm happy with it. We'll see. Hopefully I get it done. Hopefully I don't let it like sit for a really long time because I think this would be really perfect for fall weather here in Minnesota where it's like it does start getting pretty cold but you don't have to like majorly bulk up on your clothing until I don't know December January when it gets into the negatives so I think this will be nice up until that point. Um, so I'm thinking I might want to bring this one on my trip and I'm thinking that because these are sort of bigger, bigger needles. Like I really want to bring socks on my trip, but I'm just worried they're going to get confiscated. And with the way like plane travel has been with so many flights getting canceled and all this stuff, I just don't really want to check bags and like risk them not being there. Um, my mom doesn't drive and I won't have access to a car, so like I won't want to have to like go back to the airport or anything to collect my bags. I really just want to do carry-on. So I'm hoping that with these being bigger needles and being more blunt, that I'll be able to get away with them if I like bundle them up and put, you know, point protectors on them and everything without worrying. Whereas sock needles, especially since those ones are just metal, they're a little sharp, so maybe I don't want to risk it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think this could be a good home project also just because it's like pretty mindless and I'd be able to see good progress and it would be kind of nice to get it done. And it weighs like nothing. It's one skein of yarn, so it's not like I'd like worry about packing enough. I'm, I'm kind of sitting here like convincing myself that this, <laughs> this is going to be a good travel project. Let me know if you agree or if I should risk it and bring socks or both. Maybe I should do both. Well, all but the, let me know what you think. Have you ever brought metal, like, chow goo sock needles? 
on a plane in your carry-on and how's that gone for you if you could let me know that would really put my mind at ease I think if, if I've known other people have done it successfully just because I don't know it wouldn't be the end of the world to have them confiscated but like it wouldn't be great especially if it was on my way there and then I didn't have needles to use while I was there that'd be kind of a bummer um but yeah well let me let me know what you think let me know if you've had success or if if anyone who's watching this has had their needles confiscated please tell me that too just just because I just want to know I want to be prepared <laughs> all right so now this next project is the one that has fully captured my attention and that I am moderately obsessed with like I just I'm just loving it let me grab it it's it's a little it's slightly outgrowing this bag this is my spring sorrel by wool and pine um and I'm loving it so this I'll try to hold it up This is the yoke. <laughs> it's on this like really pretty small circumference, so I'm not gonna be able to show it very well. Um, I'll try to insert a picture of the yoke laid, you know, flat where it, it cause it's a big circular yoke. And I, I took a picture yesterday, so I'll try to insert that. But it is just such a fun pattern. It's got these beautiful dip stitches um, going around the yoke. And let me see if I try to like spread out a segment hmm this is gonna be tricky but yeah they kind of go in like a like a sundial out from like out and down from the neck you know what a yolk is you know <laughs> I always want to think it's yolk you know like an egg yolk spelled like y-o-l-k but it's y-o-k-e yolk <laughs> Anyway, yeah, so it's got these beautiful dip stitches. Stitches. I was really anxious about that. I just hadn't done it before. And I also hadn't done, um, what is it called? I hadn't read a chart before, and this has charts. And I was like, oh God, I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to do it. But then I did, and it's great. And it's like, so nice to have the option of like the written pattern or the chart. Um, the pattern lays it out so nicely where you can follow either. Like I can't speak highly enough of this pattern. And they also have some really good tutorials. So again, this is wool and pine. Um, and yeah, they link to some video tutorials that come with the pattern about like how to do these um, details and also how to like customize to your fit, which is really nice. Cause I think this pattern is really all about like for forming the top to your body. Like it's meant to be a a negative ease fitted crop that like accentuates your figure if you will <laughs> um i guess i'm not too concerned about that but i think it's really nice that they put such thought into it and they even did the fit videos for like i think it's a there are multiple women involved with this design company i don't know if, i know there's at least two i don't know if it's more than that but I know two of them with different body types each did a, a video on how to customize to fit and that was really nice to see like how one person might do it and then even though they're saying like of course you can do xyz like then actually seeing how another person did it differently for their body type was really really nice um so I would highly recommend it it is a paid for pattern and yeah it's worth it it is worth the price I could see myself making this again um, anyway, well, <laughs> I say when I'm this far, um, but I'm really liking it and yeah, I'm making it with, um, yarn from Knit Picks. Let me just pull out a little, little skein here. This is Swish, Swish DK from Knit Picks in the color Amethyst Heather and it is a really nice I mean, it's, it's, it's purple. Don't get me wrong. Like you could not commit, like you could not take this for another color. It's purple, but it does have a nice heathered effect that sort of tones it down. Like it's not, 
I guess the lighting here makes it look like a really dark royal purple, purple, but I think it's a little more almost like cool toned, gray toned than this lighting is showing. Like I think, are you getting it a little better back here? I don't know. It's, look, it's turn, looking really like royal colored in the camera. I feel like it's a little cooler, a little cooler than that. Cooler toned. Um, and yeah, so this yarn comes in 50 gram skeins and it is 100% fine superwash merino wool. And yeah, it's really soft. I'm, I'm pretty sensitive to wool. I like really want to, to do more like natural fibers and avoid superwash. But it's just itchy, like especially right on your, your or my chest and neck. That's where it's it's a little itchy, so it will be nice for something that's so fitted. I think that this is probably the right choice for me. So yeah, um, this is my this is my spring sorrel. And I think that they have sort of variations on this pattern for like each season, sort of in different like yarn weights and then different shapes and styles um but this one just looked so flattering on like everyone who who had pictures on Ravelry and it just it spoke to me <laughs> and clearly now I can't put it down so I am hoping this one I'm not sure I want to bring on my trip because it's so involved but I do want to get through the yoke before I leave ideally and I would also like to split for the sleeves but then I'll be on the easy part, so then it's like maybe I would want to bring it on my trip. But then if my needles got confiscated, I'd be like very bummed out. I don't know, do you guys think I should risk it? Con comment below on what you think I should do for my travel plans. Sock needles, are they too dangerous? Or should I leave them, take them? This project, leave it, take it. Shawl, leave it or take it or all of the above, take it. <laughs> Tell me what you think, please. I could definitely use advice. It's funny because I'm like pretty sure I've actually flown with knitting needles and like crochet hooks and stuff previously without thinking this hard about it. Like I know last time I went home, that's where I'm going. I'm going to California, I'm going home. I'm going to be staying with my mom and just having a really relaxed week, hopefully seeing some friends from like high school and some friends from college who've actually moved out there since then. But it's gonna be a really relaxed week. And I'm pretty sure last time I went home, it was like right when I had learned how to knit again, when I would picked it up again and I just started sock knitting. Um, and I didn't bring any knitting with me. I brought some crocheting with me. But I remember when I got home, I found some knitting needles, like in my possession at my mom's place, probably from like middle school. <laughs> and I brought them back. And I must have done carry on because I always done carry on and I ran into no issues. Granted, it was a circular wooden knitting needles, like bamboo. So maybe that was it. But I also, I think I also had some DPNs. They were still in the packaging, but like, those were definitely metal. Hmm, I'm probably overthinking it. But I'm just like, I just don't wanna get like messed up or lose, lose progress or worse, just like have packed something that then I just, is just taking up space while I'm there. Taunting me because I'll wanna work on it and I won't be able to if my needles get confiscated. <laughs> Um, yeah, so advice would be appreciated. Anyway, I have veered pretty far from my notes, I think. Let me see if there was anything else I wanted to talk about today. Um, oh, because of my trip, um, I might not do a video next week, or I, I probably won't do a video next week. There might be something, um, but it definitely won't be a regular podcast episode. So it's possible I won't be back for a couple weeks. And if I don't bring any knitting, then I might not do, do one the week after because I will have just been back from my trip and I wouldn't have any progress. Um, so it might be a little bit before I talk to you again, but I will look forward to seeing you guys after that. Um, 
And then let's see. Oh yeah, I wanted, I forgot this last time. I wanted to talk about a podcast I've been enjoying. Um, so this week I have been watching Fiber Tales, which is a really lovely po uh, podcast um, done by, um, I believe she's Danish. I, part of me wants to try to say her name. Part of me doesn't, I just don't want to butcher it, but her podcast is so lovely. It's Fiber Tales. Um, she's been podcasting for a while and I'm not caught up. I do this thing, like when I find a new podcast, I watch it from the beginning. I just can't help it. I just like, I have to do things chronologically. <laughs> it's just like part of my personality. So um, yeah, I'm watching her episodes from the beginning and I've just been really enjoying them. She's got like such a, um, I think a valuable perspective on like yarn and wool just because of her own uh, history with it. She like grew up on a sheep farm from the sounds of it. And it's just really, really interesting to hear her talk and just lovely to see the projects she is working on and designing. So I would definitely recommend checking her out. Um, and then, yeah, I guess upcoming plans, like working on this sweater, I really want to make more sweaters. I'm like very much in the mood for sweaters. Um, I don't really have sweaters quantities of yarn in my stash. I'll get into talking about my stash someday. But yeah, I don't really have sweaters quantities of yarn and or at least not in yarn that I would want to make sweaters out of if that makes sense. My tastes have changed and you know, yarn that purposes that suits one project might not suit another. So um, I think I'll be keeping an eye out for some sales. <laughs> For, for what I could buy to make sweaters. And I also really want to try short row shaping. I've never done short rows that I know of. And I really want to try it. I think it's a really valuable skill. So if you have any recommendations for like a simple pattern that has a good explanation of short row shaping or has like a simple version of short row shaping or German short rows, whatever, type, I guess I don't really mind, um, that you would recommend for someone who hasn't done that technique before, please comment below. I'd really love to see what, yeah, what, what is out there that would be a good place to start for that technique. I'm pretty willing to just dive in, but yeah, if you have any recommendations, I'd love to hear them. So that is all of what I have to talk about today. Um, I hope you guys are all Again, enjoying the long weekend if you have a long weekend or just enjoying wherever you are at. And I will talk to you guys next time. Who knows when that will be? It shouldn't be more than a few weeks, but I look forward to it. So I will see you there.